In this video we are going to build a simple forest trail scene in Autodesk 3ds Max, using V-Ray and Avis Studio tools. Let's start by creating a box with dimensions of a person. Our working units are centimeters, if you want to follow the video you'll need to convert these values in your scene units. This is a basic object for a reference on how big this scene should be. From here we can start creating the terrain with some lines. This will be our forest trail. Then for the terrain we need to copy the line a few times. And then move the individual lines in Z dimension to define the slope of the terrain. To generate the terrain mesh, first we add a cross section modifier to join the created lines. And then we apply edit patch modifier to generate the mesh from the lines. In patch sub object mode for this modifier, we can select only the trail and set new material ID and new smoothing group. On top of this, adding a turbo smooth modifier will smooth the terrain and add more geometry. Then with poly select we can select only the vertexes of the terrain that we want to be affected from the next modifier. By using soft selection the transition between affected and non-affected vertexes can be easily blended. Now we are ready to apply noise modifier to add more details to the terrain. Some experiments with the scale can helps to find the best noise size for our model. To clean the vertex selection we can add mesh select modifier. And on top of that one more turbo smooth modifier. This way in few simple steps our procedural forest terrain is done. Let's create the material for this object. We can start with general multi sub object material with two sub material slots. And then we can use some of the Chaos Cosmos materials. For example, this material for the forest ground. And this material for the forest trail. Now drag and drop the new material to the geometry. We'll need some UV coordinates for the textures. Maybe a little bit bigger size. Now it's time to create the V-Ray physical camera for this scene. For now Z position of the camera will be at the eye level of standing person. If we assign the camera to the lower left viewport, then we can lock this view in the render settings dialog. Let's see the first interactive preview of this model. Currently there are no lights in the scene and the preview is black. We are going to illuminate our scene with V-Ray Sun and V-Ray Sky environment map. In the new V-Ray 6 we can even add procedural clouds to our sky. To brighten the preview the exposure of the camera can be adjusted. 
For the perspective viewport we can change the background to gray to be able to see better the individual objects. Now to add the trees for our forest scene, we can use the new V-Ray scatter object. In combination with a couple tree models from Chaos Cosmos browser. These three models will work great for our scene. In Modify panel, with V-Ray Scatter selected, we need to add the trees and the Distribute on target object. There are too many tree instances now, so we need to adjust the scatter parameters. First, avoid collision checkbox and spacing. Then we need to fix the alignment of the trees. In transformations rollout, rotation parameters, this value can be set to 1 or closer to 1, so that the trees will be vertical. The second problem that we have with the scattered trees is that they grow on top of our trail. To fix that, we can create new line in the top view port, that defines the region where we do not want trees. With this shape created, we can move it down so that it's not getting in our way and then add it to V-Ray Scatter Object. As we can see, in a few clicks we clear our trail from trees. Scale parameters in the Scatter Object can randomize the size of the trees. If uniform checkbox is not selected we can get even more variation. Let's see how these trees look when rendered. The render is too dark, so we need to adjust the exposure one more time. Then, by repositioning the sun we can bring even more light into the frame. Here we'll need more trees to fill the background. This will be an easy fix with our procedural terrain. With moving just a few vertexes and making the terrain bigger and the trees count larger. Sometimes when modifying an object, the interactive renderer needs to be restarted. Now we can continue to fine-tune the terrain shape. With the new terrain, we can reposition the sun again. With V-Ray Scatter Seed parameter, we can generate different random configurations of trees. This one looks interesting. We can even add some fog and try to show the sun rays going through it. Adding V-Ray Environment Fog is just a few clicks in the Environment and Effects window. Then to adapt it to the scene we need to modify some of its parameters.
To see the preview of the fog, the interactive rendering need to be restarted. We can play with the sun position to get even better result. Also, we need to increase the ISO and F number of the camera, because the scene is too dark. Now the scene is looking better, but we can lower the transparency of the fog to make it less visible. To finish our forest scene, we need to add some grass. Let's hide all current objects and import some grass assets. In the latest versions of Chaos Cosmos browser we can find a preset with wild grass that will work great with our scene. This preset comes with a predefined distribution plane, but we are not going to use it. Now we can move the scatter objects and asset aside and unhide all geometry. To work faster we can hide the trees for now. For the grass scatter object, we need to add a distribute on target. And then set up the max limit and distribution count parameters. We can see our first preview of the grass. The distribution count is too low and we need to set bigger value. With that fixed, grass now is covering our trail. The trail should be excluded from the grass scatter area. Let's do that by define new spline, created from edit poly modifier. The last thing to do is to add the new editable spline to excluded areas in the grass scatter object. Now the grass looks good on the terrain and we can unhide the trees. And render the first preview of all new elements. To improve the scene even further we can convert it to Ace's CG color space to get more depth and realism from our renders. We can do that easily with Ava's Studio Tools AW Color Manager. To convert our current scene, all we need to do is press one button. Once pressed, all scene materials will be converted and then 3ds Max will update the view port shaders. This will take a few seconds. Once done, we can preview our scene in Ace's CG color space. To speed up the rendering we can switch to V-Ray GPU renderer. For the new renderer, we need to run AW Color Manager again to configure the materials and the new render settings. In this case we are also going to use distributed rendering. Let's see the result. The scene looks good, but to make the scene even better we can add a point of interest in our composition. To do that, we can add a person walking on the trail. Currently in Chaos Cosmos we do not have hiking people, but we can easily download one from this or similar websites. If we type hiking, we can see that we have a few options. We've already downloaded the small version of this image and we are going to use it for our scene. 
Now to place this cutout, we can use Ava's Studio Tools A2D Image plugin. To do that, from Create Panel, select Ava's Studio Tools, A2D Image, select the file and set the height. Then pick a point on the trail. If it's too far away, we can reposition the object. Now to rotate it to the camera check this option. Then select Shell Shadow, V-Ray Material and Generate Preview Options. For the network rendering we can convert the A2D image object to editable poly. And render the scene. Now we have more interesting composition, but we can reposition our A2D image object to achieve even better result. And render again. Now the texture for our 2D image of a hiker is more saturated because we are working in ACES CG and we have not converted the material for this object. We can convert it by selecting the object, opening a color manager dialog and pressing convert selection button. Now all used diffuse textures are converted from sRGB to ACES CG color space. Let's render and see how the converted texture look like in our scene. Now the hiker is not so saturated, but because this is our only point of interest we can fine tune its position and make it more vibrant by blending the texture's sRGB color space with ACES CG. First we move the object. And then adjust the slider in AW Color Manager for the selected textures. Let's see the changes in the final image. To make the image more realistic, we can enable some lens effects and adjust the parameters. While rendering, we can try some of the other included with AW Color Manager LUTs. With the dark lookup table we get more like late afternoon look. And with the bright lookup table, more like early morning. With base lookup table we get the normal ACES CG workflow colors and contrast. This is the final image on full screen with the bright lookup table applied. This is the same view rendered in sRGB color space. This is the image rendered in ACES CG color space with the base lookup table. This is the image rendered in ACES CG color space with the base lookup table and some color corrections in external application. We hope you enjoy this short tutorial. Please consider liking, subscribing and sharing our videos. Thank you for watching.